Hi, it's Ron and Kimberly, continuing our education of how to think like Leonardo da Vinci, Seven Steps to Genius, every day. And we have the lovely... Savannah, hi! Who's joining in with us today. And uh, today we're actually delving into Arte Ciencia. So explain to our viewers what Arte Ciencia is. Arte Ciencia is the development of the balance between science and art, logic and imagination, which in return is whole brain thinking. So you may be familiar with some of the research into left and right brain and you may even know what your dominant side is for yourself. Uh, so in other words the right hemisphere of the brain is more of the artistic intuitive uh, type of thinking. The left side of the brain is more uh, your step-by-step -step, your logic side of the brain and thinking. Uh, our public school system, however, and, and I won't get on my soapbox too much today, but they play into the logic side of the brain. Left brain. The left brain. Our education system, as well as science in general, tends to neglect the nonverbal form of intellect. What it comes down to is that modern society discriminates against the right hemisphere. So the result of that is, you know, that those with a left hemisphere dominance tend to do well in school, but they often fail to develop their creative uh, side. And those who have a more right hemisphere dominant brain often feel guilty for the way they think, and they're frequently mislabeled as learning disabled. Uh, ADHD, all of those kind of labels that get put on kids that sometimes, sometimes are, are uh, truths, but a lot of times they are misdiagnoses of someone who is more of a creative type thinker, the, the right hemisphere dominant person. Now, <clears throat> when you study Leonardo da Vinci and you study this book, they, they teach you to not just be right or left brain, but to be what? Whole brained, using both parts of your brain, both the left hemisphere as well as the right hemisphere. So, you know, all of us tend to have one side that's more dominant than the other, so we need to learn to develop both sides of the brain to become that whole brain thinker. So some people have, have questioned and asked, so was Leonardo a scientist who studied art or an artist who studied science? He studied both. Right. We actually, there's a lot of information that we actually didn't know about until starting to, to learn more about his life, how much he actually knew of all kinds of different things, not just art. So for Leonardo, art and science were indivisible. Uh, you know, he, he really had an in-depth study you look at, you know, the way he would draw his sketches, uh, the way he would, you know, then turn them into paintings. If you look at, he would have sketches that were, you know, mathematically correct. They were um, proportion-wise. Everything was correct. As well as he would take a drawing of, of an arm and he would do it in different positions, different poses and sketch. Just an arm or just a leg, maybe standing, then walking, then running. So he'd just have those muscles so that he could really understand the human anatomy and being able to portray that in his art. So then he would turn around and take these, you know, insanely intense, um, uh, in-depth sketches and turn them into beautiful works of art. Some of the most, you know, glorious works of art that we, you know, revere to this day. And he was able to do that because of his in-depth study of the science of human anatomy, of botany. You know, he would dissect not only you know, humans and animals, but plants. And he studied different, different types of plants and talked about how everything is interconnected like, the, like a leaf of a plant and how it goes down into the roots. It's very uh, eye-opening. The, the depth of his knowledge of science and how he turned that into the creative works of art uh, that he did. One of the things that they talk about in the book of doing, and it goes into uh, where we started on uh, developing both sides of the brain, is mind mapping. Now when you think of your typical way of taking notes in you know, school, what we're taught in, in school settings mostly and in, in college even, what are we taught? How are we taught to take notes? Well, you start with Roman numeral one, and then you go to big letter A, and then little letter A, and then as you keep going and keep going, and you're down in Roman numeral two, and you forgot something, then you got to go back, and sometimes either start over or try to figure out and erase and stuff like that. So it's kind of 
it's, it's a difficult way of, of taking notes, especially if you're using more of your, your right brain for the creative thinking. So mind mapping is actually uh, a better way um, to allow both sides of your brain to work at the same time. So again, an outline appeals to that logic, step by step, following out this is what we're doing. Mind mapping, which is great to use not only for taking notes, but for goal setting for finding your life's purpose, for getting into, uh, you know, even ideas. You know, and the way I think of this, of mind mapping, is if you think of, and they do teach this in school, of a word web. You know, you, you talk about, you know, when we do a book report sometimes, you'd have the idea in the middle, and then you'd have the little lines off with other ideas off of there. Well, this, this is kind of like that, but it also involves and incorporates pictures and not just words. So ideas, doodles, sketches, drawings, pictures of what you're thinking, how you're feeling at the time, depending on what mind map you're creating at that moment. Now Savannah uh, has done a mind map. Would you like to show everyone one of your first mind maps that you did? Or maybe get a little get closer. closer and um, explain, explain your mind map. Okay, well, it has a smiley face in the middle because I don't know why I just wanted to be happy. <laughs> Um, and then I just, I wrote down Chili Peppers and Musical Theater, and I put singing and dancing and acting as, like, little branches off of Chili Peppers. And then I put my story that I, um, do, I put writing, polyvore, imagination, and dancing, I put costumes, music, makeup, and, um, and then I put fun activities, I put well, for, for Mutual, for my church Mutual, I put friends, fun activities, and personal progress. So, so right. this was kind of a, a mind map about you, right? Some of the things that you're interested in and, and different ways you can develop your interests and all that, correct? Yeah. So that was, that was kind of the purpose. That was one of the first ones that, that we did. We also did mind maps on what mind mapping could be useful for. You know, when some of the ideas were, you know, taking notes goal setting, all of those kind of things, and, and, and then you have branches that go off from goal setting. How can it help me with goal setting? And we're going to get into even more about mind mapping coming up, as well um, as developing both sides of the brain in our next issue. So I encourage you, if you haven't picked up this book yet, it is a very valuable book into developing you know, all of your senses and all of your skills and becoming a whole brain thinker. So you can grab it from Amazon. I'll post a link below to where you can actually pick the book up. And remember, when you wake up, wake, wake up, up unstoppable. unstoppable.